obviously we all know that this year has been just so trying for everyone. And so holidays particularly are looking a little differently this year. So that's why Made and, Made Well and Create and Cultivate have teamed up to put together the series called Cozy Chats. And that's what uh, Cleo and I are kicking this off today. And um, you're in LA and I'm in New York. So we're 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. right now. And so I'm trying to be as cozy as possible. I'm wearing Made Well. I'm right by my couch. I'm on my cozy pillows. Um, I have a candle. I don't have a fireplace, but if I did, I'd be What's good. your candle scent? Ooh, um, I should have the Chill House candle, but I haven't re, uh, uh, repurposed purchased that one. So I have the Maison Louis Marie candle burning. I forget the scent, but mm. I would buy it when I go to New York Pilates. I've been going there. Um, they have this like really cool membership model right now where you just kind of go and do Pilates on your own because they can't do classes. So it's their scent and it's incredible. Um, but yeah. Oh, delish. And where are we finding you today? I'm actually, I'm in my writing room because I'm just kind of winding down my writing day. Um, and so this is basically my desk where I'm like mostly creative, but my writing room is really cozy because I actually feel like I can't concentrate unless I'm cozy. Like, you know, I just feel like I need to feel warm and comfortable and, and, and have a kind of this vibe of things feeling soothing around me because I think of so much of what I make is in that vein also and so it's kind of like you have to kind of be what you want to really put into the world and so I feel like if I was in like really harsh lighting or really cold like hard setting I, it would be really hard for me to obviously like write these kind of you know warm affirmations and mantras and things so um I'm in my writing room it's in my garage <laughs> and um yes I'm I know and I'm just so happy to be here and I'm so grateful to Madewell and Creighton Cultivate for having me and I too am wearing Madewell so cute is that a dress um, no it's a top okay and it's very very cute and it's also like perfect because it's like you know you just you like the perfect quarantine top is like I, you can actually wear it all day and you don't feel like it's too tight or you can't eat lunch and or like you know I like leave the room and like go hold my baby for a couple hours and play so you kind of want to be able yeah, to you need to move wait how old is your baby she's gonna be a year in January oh I can't God. even believe it you're six months ahead of me mine just turned four months oh you have a true quarantine baby oh full on yeah we didn't know that we were gonna face this year ahead when we uh oh. con conceived um but it's honestly been like the most amazing blessing of all time because I am naturally someone that's always like on the go I like to pop pop around a ton like I'm in and out of places all day long that was my lifestyle yeah. before Hendrix so this has really allowed me to become like calmer and more settled and more relaxed as as a whole completely which is kind of crazy because like with a child you would think that I wouldn't be relaxed but I've actually never felt less anxious if that makes sense wow well bit aside I'll yeah. say because COVID obviously brings on its own stresses but um he's really like brought so much peace and calm to just yeah. my whole being I also think it's because really one of the most incredible things that I didn't expect is that nothing makes you more present than being with your baby because a if you like look away and, and you'll see especially when they're like eight months like you look away and you're like where'd you go <laughs> you know and they they get like so fast and they start crawling and and so but you know you also realize that how important undivided attention is because you see the difference in how your baby is able to engage with you if you're kind of trying to be on your phone or on a call and also be with them and it's really difficult. And then you realize that you're like, well, at what point did we, you know, stop wanting to give to ourselves or to our partners? What is obviously nourishing a baby, you know, this kind of undivided attention and presence. And, um, and so I think that a lot of that is what has brought so much peace to me too, during this time, because it's such a, you know, I, because I have to be present with my baby, I can't be obsessively future tripping about the vaccine or when this ends or when the world opens up again and all these things that I think are these kind of spirals we get into where our anxiety just throws us into trying to predict the future mm -hmm. um, because 
in that moment when your baby's looking at you and has no idea what the future is or isn't, um, you know, your only gift you can give them is presence. And that is really cool. And it's been such a gift to, to me too. So true. Oh, that makes me want to be so much more present with Henny. I can definitely see like, especially as they get older, obviously you want to give them as much attention at all times, but as they get older, you take your eyes off of them and they're doing something completely different. You're like, wait, what? Like, it, and it's so important to obviously don't drive yourself crazy chasing them around with your eyes all day long, but um, just knowing to, to engage with them as much as possible, especially like while they're like learning so much right now, they're a sponge and they're every day is something like new and exciting for them. So, and giving them those moments, of course, too. So hopefully we'll get to bring them out a lot more in the near future. We'll get yeah, there. I feel like I have like a little backyard baby. I'm like, I, I'm like, I swear there's more to the world than this backyard Memphis, but uh, at least you have a backyard though. Yeah. It's, it's tough being a New York mother, but we're getting there. Baby steps. Yeah. Literally. No pun intended. Literally. Literally. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about journaling because I know that's one of your main kind of mediums and form of self-care. Of course, you built a career off of it. Um, you're an incredible poet and you have some of the most powerful quotes I've ever read, um, mm -hmm. ever. I actually screenshotted one today about basically being an artist, but also a masterpiece mm -hmm. of your life. Um, I forget the exact quote, but it was really beautiful and, and, and poignant, poignant and like really like brought this idea home that we are basically always designing our lives and you've designed a really beautiful life for yourself and for, and are inspiring other women to do the same. So with journaling, how, how do you even get started? Because for me, it's one of those things that we talk a lot, a lot about at Chill House. Um, we're definitely big proponents of it. However, for people like me, I don't like writing. I have terrible handwriting. My hand gets exhausted. I sometimes don't know how to get started. So what are some tips for someone that's just like, you know, similar, has similar issues as I do? Well, so before you kind of, want to start anything and and even I remember when when Madewell first came to me and we're like we want to have these conversations and they said I got to do it with you and it was kind of you know we were talking about what are these things that can kind of make you feel a little calmer during the holidays and kind of you know especially during you know the end of the year holidays you really are just reckoning with so much you know especially in this year I I was talking to my baby daddy uh, last night about it and I was like you know there's going to be so we're going to be processing 2020 for the next like three or five years. And that is, you know, going to begin at the end of 2020, really, because all of a sudden we're going to sit back and the world will be at its normal kind of stop anyway, because, you know, usually between like the 20, you know, third and new years, um, the world quiets down usually. So we're going to have that quiet and I, you know, I think there's going to be so much going on in our bodies and our minds and being kind of like, oh my God, like what the to just happen this year, you know, and, 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 and how do I want to set intention for going to 2021? And so that's why, um, when we took, started thinking about, you know, what we would bring to this conversation, I was like, journaling is such an incredible tool because, and, and I'll say that, you know, the thing about that makes journaling can make journaling impactful in your life is first valuing it. And so the value of journaling is this, it's not about being a writer. It's not about having good handwriting. It's not about, um, you know, wanting to be a writer. It's about knowing the value of moving the stories and the ideas and the conflicting feelings out of your body and out of that loop in your mind and putting it on the page so that you can actually like, have a kind of an inventory to go through and be like, wow, you know, is I didn't realize that's how I was actually feeling. Or like, I didn't realize, you know, one of the things I talk about a lot is the difference between what's true and what's real. So like, you'll have these thoughts where you're like, wow, it's real that like, wow, I feel like I did nothing this year. But if I wrote down everything I did this year, I'm like, wow, but that's not true. You know, I'm just used to this pace that is like driving me and grinding me down to the bone. And when I actually sat in a space of, you know, okayness and not feeling I had to, you know, grind and, and move and constantly be everywhere and have that be a part of how I value how I spend my time, you know, 
I realized that like I did do a lot. So, you know, the real thought is you're, you're not doing enough. The truth is you are. And sometimes you can only see that when you have it right in front of you and you're reading the story of your own year or reading the story of your own day. Um, and, you know, journaling to me is, is like the freest form of therapy. Um, and it gives, it puts you in the position, you know, it's really funny because the, the um, kind of prose that you said that you started the conversation with the masterpiece is literally like the first page of the Heart Talk journal. And it says, um, the best thing about your life is that it is constantly in a state of design. This means you have at all times the power to redesign it make moves, allow shifts, smile more, do more, do less, say no, say yes. Just remember when it comes to your life, you are not only the artist, but the masterpiece as well. That's the one. (laughs) When you put your story and your life in front of you, you see that you have so much power to be that artist and you kind of can see and understand, you know, your your masterpiece or, or what it is that you are building. And so that is why I think that, you know, the first step for anyone is like, this is why it's valuable, you know, because you, you don't want to do anything if you don't feel like it adds value to your life. And someone could tell you all day long that you're like, you know, doing like yoga or whatever, the, like kind of self-care ritual it might be is like so good for you. But it's like, if you just feel that like, it actually makes you more anxious than it does calm, you're not going to do it. And, and that's okay. And then that may not be a part of your yeah. self-care routine. But I think that, you know, first and foremost, it's like, okay, the value is it helps. Yep. And in a time where if you're looking outward, you know, like if you're getting on the internet to try to feel better, like you're already kind of starting in the wrong place because the the one place, you know, you always have for sure to feel better is yourself. If you can cultivate the tools. Yes, absolutely. And so one of my favorite ways to kind of crack open the journaler inside of us at all. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Is, you know, to start with um, how are you doing really? You know, and to really just ask yourself, you know, like, are you okay? Yeah. You know, how, and, and, and the mantra I kind of always connect to that is I stay connected to myself by checking in on our, myself. And we have to ask ourselves, like, how often do I really check in? You know, I'll still, even in like a, the slowed down pace of quarantine, we still move through the day. And like, was there a point in the day where you kind of like took a breath that was just for you? And that was like, how am I feeling about today? How am I feeling about my work? Totally. How am I feeling about my family? How and am I feeling like, about motherhood? It's also important to ask yourself that question. Cause I feel like rather than other people ask you that question, cause I feel like so for so many years, we've been conditioned to ask that question to one another. How are you? And I feel like it's always felt so insincere, even though it is a sincere question, but it's, uh, it's kind of like this follow up to hello. And it's, you know, supposed to always be kind of followed by I'm good. And it's this Mm -hmm. kind of short conversation. And you're just like, that's it, like game over when it comes to really discussing my feelings. So rather than waiting for someone to ask, it's like taking that, you said, like that moment to reflect, taking inventory on your feelings, taking inventory on what you've done, and also kind of um, realizing just how much you've done, it, especially at a time like this year, it was to me one of those years that I felt like I got nothing done. Because again, we were so used to being on the go nonstop. And like, you know, we value, we're, we we're, live in a culture that values like being overworked, right? As like, And exhaustion, you know? And exhaustion. Like Brene Absolutely. Brown says exhaustion as a badge of honor. You know, it's like, if we can't add exhaustion to what we did, how do we know that what we did was valuable? Yeah. And I do think that this year and hopefully companies like Chill House and, and, and advocates like you um, have helped people realize that it's more important to practice self-care, self-love, self-reflection, all those things, prioritizing that over prioritizing being overworked and, you know, and trying to put in so many hours towards anything but you. Um, So that I think is like, and yeah, journaling being one of the key things that drives it home for a lot of people. Yeah. And so if you're new to it, or you're kind of ending the year, just end the year, you know, the easiest journal, it's literally the first page of the, like 
the book that I made about journaling because it was like the most fundamental way to just like start the journey is to just check in on yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you can even make a habit of checking in on yourself regularly, you will find that you're getting overwhelmed less. You will find that it is going to be so much easier for you to make decisions because you're going to be like, "Mm, no, I know how I feel about this. You know, I know how I feel about taking on another project. I, I know why, like if, even if the dream project came to me, why I feel apprehensive is because I know how I feel about spending more time away from my family, mm-hmm. you know? And so when you have these things of like, how am I feeling about motherhood? How am I feeling about um, a year in isolation? How am I feeling about my family? How, wh- how, what have I been afraid of this year? When right. have I found, um, you know, my, myself feeling my most loved this year? What do I really love right now? You know, mm-hmm. and then I think that when you can kind of start collecting all the things from that check-in, mm-hmm. it's really, um, you'll find that when you start to think about where you want to be, like in 2021, you're like, ooh, like I know how I feel about what's going on in my life. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to be a little bit better and more intentional about how I kind of build and in, in, in the architect of my life um, going into mm-hmm. a new year. Yeah, um, you're designing it as you go. And exactly. so it's important to check in. Do I like those tiles? Do, yeah. I, do I like that pillow? Yeah, yeah, but you know, we go, we do, we'll go our whole lives without being like, I don't even know if I like this. I right. think, you know, I, I think I like it because it's there and I didn't think I had a problem with it, but like, you know, and I think that whatever it may be from, you know, the way your house is to what you're wearing to who you're hanging out with. I mean, I don't know about you, but I had this like big edit of even friendships this year where I was like, whoa, in a year where like, you know, your relationships, all of the amount of friendships you've had shrunk and then went deeper, you realized who you could go deeper with, who, like, if it all, like, if it gets smaller, who doesn't feel like it's healthy or safe or loving for you? And you're like, oh, like, I was so busy, like meeting you really quick for drinks or (laughs) like going here or doing that, that I didn't even know that I don't even think we have anything in common, (laughs) like, you know, and so, but a lot of that comes from checking in and being like, "Mm, does this person make me feel better when I leave the room or do I feel worse about myself? And you may not, you may be moving so quickly and living like from distraction to distraction to distraction that you never know that. So if you can have even one habit of being like, I'm going to journal one day a year, the one journal entry you should have a year is checking in on yourself and like moving through how you feel about loved ones, family, friendships, work, mm-hmm. your home space, your body, um, yeah. and you're, you're kind of, and that, those things are your spiritual journey. Absolutely. Well, I promise you, I will start journaling. Well, maybe I won't just be one. like, just do uh, one. I'm going to do one by the end of the year. Cause I do, <laughs> I like to do like end of year Instagram recaps, which to me, even though I That's need a journal, it is a way it's how I journal right I share moments of my life I'm very open about a lot so to me that is a journaling practice Um, but I do think that it's healthier obviously to use paper and a pen and no distractions just kind of you know check in and not even what's interesting about doing everything digitally is that you do there is this kind of uh, kind of pullback thing that happens when you're going to put something out that's even though you're you're trying to be as authentic and honest as possible in that moment there's still this kind of I don't want to say anything that I may regret right so a paper piece of paper it's just between you and the paper it's by far the same right way you can rip it up after that too if you're not you know? you're like you know what this isn't it <laughs> um, okay, so because I wish we actually had like three hours. Together. I know. So I saw someone in the comments saying like it feels like we're at dinner, and I feel like we should have just actually had like a dinner date. Um, so I do want to kind of you know give all the people here what they really want, which is for you to also talk about the. Okay, you told me how to pronounce it, guasha. Guasha. Have are you not familiar with the guasha? I have no idea what it is. I'm just gonna be honest. Stop. I'm always blown away by how many people don't know what a gua sha is because we literally talk about it at Chill House every day. It's like, it bleeds out of our ears. Exactly. Someone just said- <laughs> Oh my God, it's life-changing. It's life-changing. Is this the face massage? It is. It's a face massage tool. Uh, you know, a gua sha is a face oh. massage. Yeah, so it's a face massage tool. Um, this is a white jade tool. This is a Chill House tool. 
we sell it online, 25 bucks, but there are gazillions out there with different shapes and different kind of, um, I guess, setups to, to help kind of do all sorts of fun things to your face. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing that we pair it with our favorite face oil. You use a face oil or a serum. It's supposed to help penetrate the product a little better as well. So it's basically like a magical tool that people have used for years. Um, it's ancient Chinese medicine, I believe. And, and um, yeah, it's good for blood circulation. It's good for um, kind of like flushing out the lymphatic system. Um, it's good for muscle tension relief. So for me, I mean, I'm not gonna go into like a full tutorial. You can find a million of those on uh, YouTube or even like if you go on our Instagram, I'm sure we have a couple. So definitely check that out. Um, but I will say what makes it so powerful is that for me, it's like a constant reminder to do something for myself because mm -hmm. I do my skincare routine every day, right? Like morning, night, sometimes I skip night if I'm too tired and I'm just like, I need to crash. So quite honestly, it's not always a two time sort of thing for me, but it's always a one time a day thing for me. And I usually always pull out the gua sha because it's supposed to be a tool that you use daily. Um, so it is kind of this, this kind of representation of self care for me, but it also has incredible benefits. Um, so again, all the benefits that I already kind of explained. Oh, but but it's, for, if it helps your limp, do you do your neck? Is that what happens? Your neck. Yeah. Wait, can I see you do your neck? So the neck for me, I've heard both ways. You can either, I think, go through the entire face and then flush out, but then you also can use this part of the tool to kind of move this. The jawline is a big part of where you hold all of your tension. So I work around my face here and then I kind of work around this way and then I do like a flush this way. Cool. But other people go up. So it's it's kind of like choose your own adventure. And especially if you're trying to do different things um, and you are looking for like kind of different benefits, um, it has a lot of them. So a lot of people also use it for wrinkle reduction. Um, I actually just saw a tutorial where um, she showed how to kind of like go through the the middle right here um, where we create all these like pre I just got Botox by the way so I don't have many lines happening on my forehead <laughs> but if I did a week ago I would go like this and it helps with um, getting rid of some of those wrinkles that start penetrating right over here as well as crow's feet you can do a similar thing use this part of the gua sha move around the face but my favorite thing is like the kind of using the stone to put um, pressure around your shoulder area and like the back of your neck, which for me, that's where I hold all my tension are these two kind of muscles that hold up the neck. So I use it to kind of work my way around the shoulders and neck. Um, and yes, you can always put it in the fridge to keep it super cold. Um, that's another- Someone wrote that, that you can, uh, it helps with under eye circles. I need that. All the things. I Do you mean, find that you just have never slept I will ship again? You that I what? Do you find that you've just never really slept again after having a baby? Yeah. I hate it to be, I, I don't want to be one of those people because I actually have found that to be very unmotivating when it comes, like I didn't want to have a child for so long because I was scared that I wasn't going to sleep ever again, blah, blah, blah. Something happens with your body when you become a mother or like the second you start like basically, you know, bringing life into this world where, I don't know, you just adjust. Yeah. But I haven't slept through the night in four months. Yeah. Like at all. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so yeah, it's- What's, But they'll sleep, is, what, is, is he sleeping through the night yet or no? No. Soon, and then you will. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to that day, but I'm also okay, you know, it's, Again, but I like, I like listen to the, she sleeps at night, but I'm like on the monitor, like <laughs> listening all night. Yeah, exactly. You're still probably like up and kind of stressed out that they're in another room. Like, I don't, I can't imagine, like, I feel like I'm not going to sleep at all the first month. Cause I'm going to be checking in on the nanit every two minutes. Yeah. Right. So, and I feel like I just forgive myself for it because it's like, okay, like I just had a new human. So like it might take more than a year to get used to having this new human I'm in charge of. And then sometimes I look at her and I'm like, I can't believe I'm in charge of you. Right. It's so cool. And it's so crazy. So much responsibility. Like I am in charge of your life. Like, I mean, I had a little bit of a dose of that with, a, with our dog, but it, it's not the same, obviously, because the dog stays the same. You train them once and you hope <laughs> they have, like 
stay the same. There's not like every day could be a new challenge, a new obstacle, a new lesson. Like it's not, it's not that. So it's definitely been um, the most eye-opening experience for me, obviously, but um, it's also been like very natural. Hmm. If that makes sense. Did that feel, did it feel that way for you? You know, I, yes. I mean, I think it does in the sense of, you know, all of the anxieties you have around, like, can you do it? Like you are so busy doing it. And then you realize that doing it is something that is obviously in some way coming naturally to you. That it's like, I just thought I would be constantly afraid of like, what am I going to do? I'm just going to be like so scared having this little baby all the time and not knowing what to do, you know, and I was the person like I didn't really read the books and I didn't really get on the blogs because I was, you know, I felt like there's just so much information that I kind of like really only relied on my mom friends to kind of fill me in. And, and so I felt really, um, and, and when you do that too, you, there, you see that all of your friends are doing it in different ways. There really is no wrong way so I I do think it did but it's like it's still just so hard you know and I mean especially in in, I mean for for, she's he's four months yes that's a period I just cried all the time (laughs) (laughs) I cried all the time at four months like anything and everything I just cried and cried oh my god um Henny is actually I think in comparison to other babies from what I heard quite easy so I I think I'm pretty lucky but I guess natural in the sense that if you're not maybe checking in on the blogs if you're not really paying attention to what everybody's doing you just can kind of go with the flow if you have kind of basic understanding of how their brain develops and and kind of have good intuition as to what is good for them I think it could feel really natural you just let enjoy them and, and let them enjoy um, these little nuggets of, of life, um, whether that be through their toys or them discovering their toes or their face on, in a mirror, you know, it's all so sweet. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's actually, it's been not easy. Again, I'm not sleeping, but I've had, a, I'm pretty lucky with this one. But you're finding good self-care during this time? I, I am, I think. I mean, I try to. I practice self-care, like, again, kind of skincare is one of my main things, but um, I'm like, okay, Adam, my husband, you have the baby now. I'm going to go sit in my tub Mm -hmm. for a little longer than I should. And by that, I mean, I'm not like filling up my tub with like bath salt and all this crazy stuff. I'm literally just sitting in my tub. And that's what I, like, if I'm not washing my hair, I'm sitting in my tub And I don't even have it like all the way filled up, which I know sounds kind of gross because I'm not always washing my back every day. But Mm -hmm. I find that like that moment to myself is so important to recharge, obviously, because you're just taking time for you and just breathing and like doing absolutely nothing but letting water kind of like hit your body. But also um, I find that it actually creatively charges me. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big meditator. Like I meditate when I really do feel anxious. I'll do like a lot of breath work, whether that's in the bathroom or like in my bed, but I'm not like an avid meditator. So for me, bath time, that moment to myself in that morning where I don't have any distractions, where everybody, the phone is away, you know, the baby is with his dad. um, That is my time to complete. Your bath time meditation. It really is. I know it sounds so simple, but I always say self-care is kind of whatever you make of it, like find that thing that you do, that ritual that you do every day and make it, um, make it self-care. Yeah. However that looks. And as you know, I, I feel the same way. It's like, I think it's, if it feels good, do that, you know? And, and, and I think that, you know, self-care is really a collection of the rituals that hold you up. So if if the bath holds you up and that feels like a meditation, then like define it as your meditation. Yeah, Um, exactly. We are out of time because really we should have just done this for like an hour. Seriously, with wine. I'm actually on a cleanse right now, but normally I'd be- You are? What cleanse are you doing? Um, It's called the Clean Program. I've done it now. This will be my like fourth time, I believe. And um, I just need a detox. I have all this water weight, I believe, still from pregnancy. So obviously for vanity reasons, I'm doing it, but also because I've just been eating whatever I want, drinking all the wine I can drink because I had nine months of not drinking it. So yeah, it was- (laughs) <laughs> if I went on a cleanse right now, I'd have to keep wine. <laughs> That's my one big vice. It's the hardest, 
hardest I, part. That's like, I just, yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, no, no wine for me for a little bit. We'll so see. how long's the cleanse? It's 21 days. <gasps> wow. I know I'm on day two, so I'm not getting Congratulations. to it. Thank it's you. It's going to be amazing. I, I'm really, I'm really excited about the results and to see how I feel and hopefully keep up some part of this healthy lifestyle as time goes on. Cause it shouldn't be just this like marathon and stop. It should be, or the sprint and stop. It should be a yeah. marathon, right? Yeah. Keeping the health vibes strong, but this was so awesome. You're so I lucky. I feel like I have like housekeeping a real quick. Okay. Before we go. Okay. Cute. All right. I'm going to just say, because I'm a rule follower and I have some housekeeping, which is, well, before my housekeeping, I just want to say thank you so much to Create and Cultivate and Madewell for having us because this was so fun. And I I literally feel like I got to like meet a new friend in quarantine, which doesn't ha ever happen. Um, and I do hope that this helped. I'm going to buy a gua sha. Gua I'll sha. send you one. Gua sha. Okay. Yeah, and then I'm great. going to get a face oil and do it because I like I don't know anything about yes. body or face products. <laughs> and um, and thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And this is the first of a series, right? And so there's going to be some more. There's going to be another one um, that's going to be with Tabitha Brown and Erica Chan Kaufman. And they are going to be kind of talking about like a holiday vibe, which I feel like I need to watch because I am deeply obsessed with any type of interior design or like, even though I'll be hosting zero people, I will host myself at my house and I will watch. Um, and so thank you guys so much for having us. And that's it. Thank you. So lovely Bye. meeting you. Bye. Bye.